You know, whenever I review a 3D printer, I lament that I don't have the time to give it years of experience because that's what you're going to get with this 3D printer. So what would happen if I went back and looked at the 3D printers that I reviewed and, and talked about what happened after the review? Would I still recommend these 3D printers? Let's find out. <music> You know, I've actually got a surprising number of 3D printers to review in this, and it's going to be very difficult to get through them all, so I'm going to have to move at a very quick pace. Now, when I review a 3D printer in my head, I kind of do it on a three-axis system, which I haven't been putting in my review, so I'm going to go back and rank these all on this little three-axis system. The three axes on this system are price, capability, and ease of use. If it's very, very cheap, it's got a high rating on the price. The second axis is capability. And the thing about capability is it, again, it's subjective, but it depends on a lot of things. It basically asks, what can you produce with this? So a bigger 3D printer is more capable than a smaller one. A multi-headed 3D printer is more capable than a single-headed 3D printer. What happens when you get a small multi-headed 3D printer up against a large single-headed 3D printer? Yeah, these numbers kind of change a little bit. Capability is also affected by how easy it is to use and maintain the 3D printer. That is to say, if this 3D printer is closed source and it breaks and you're never going to be able to fix it, that's going to be a big hit to the capability because you can't use a 3D printer that doesn't work. And last access is ease of use. Now, for a lot of people, they will abandon and ignore ease of use. They would rather have a 3D printer that is harder to use if it's more capable and cheaper. And in fact, that's what you're going to get a lot of the time. But for me, I feel that ease of use is an important metric for 3D printing in general. If 3D printing is going to move forward, the 3D printers have to get easier to use. And so I'm always on the lookout for that 3D printer that's cheap, capable, and super easy to use. And that's why I rate these things on there. Now, ease of use, again, plays into how easy it is to fix as well and how easy it is to maintain. Just like in price, if you've locked me down to having filament from a single source that you're going to overprice me on, while the initial price might not be high, the price to use is high. So that'll be a negative bump in the price. So yes, it's a complex scale and it's very subjective and, and don't don't worry if, if it's a little bit fluid, but it's I'm going to go through this real fast and look at these 3D printers and try and put this on the scale so that we can compare them. Now, the first 3D printer that I reviewed way back in November of 2016 was the Monoprice Select Mini. And I talked about the V1. I might have also talked about the V2 way back then. But the Monoprice Select Mini 3D printers are super great on the price scale. They're not that capable because they're small and they are single-headed. And the V1s couldn't even do very many materials, but the V2s upgraded the hot end, so they were capable of doing some higher temp materials and things like that. Slightly more capable, but overall their capability score was passable but low. And as far as ease of use goes, they actually were higher than some other 3D printers owing to a full color interface. Even though it wasn't touchscreen, it was easier to use. And they did have Wi-Fi. And I had some videos where I talked about the Wi-Fi on the Monoprice Select Mini 3D printers. I will say that their Wi-Fi chips were a little bit underpowered, especially in light of some 3D printers that I've used in the future. So while that gives them a boost in, cap in ease of use, it's not a big boost. But overall, the Monoprice Select Mini, especially the V2, still gets a recommendation from me. I like it. I think that it's a good printer and it's a good starter printer. It's not the best. We'll get to the best at the end, but it's still it's a recommendable 3D printer and I like them. The Wanhao Duplicator 6 is a printer that I'm not using much anymore. I used it for a little while and I was impressed with some things about it. It is slightly more expensive than a mini 3D printer, but this ain't a mini 3D printer. It's much bigger, much more capable. I like the enclosure that makes capable to enclose it and keep it 
enclosed so that you can use higher temp filaments and things like that. Plus, in light of the current Vox scare, it's good to have an enclosure on your 3D printer to keep those Vox away from you. So I'll give that one a slight bump into capability because of that as well. As far as ease of use goes, I love this thing's user interface. It's stolen from the Ultimaker and they didn't actually change some of the things that they should have because this was a direct drive so it's loading and unloading filament shouldn't say insert it in the back it should say insert it in the top so that maybe gives it a slight negative bump but overall it's more usable than Bear Marlin and I, I like it I like this 3D printer it's not excellent in anywhere but what it does is good it's got a good solid triangle on my little scale there so there you go then i reviewed the anet a8 and that one gets no score whatsoever i'm sorry the anet a8 has become such a health risk bursting into flames for so many people that i not only can't recommend it i give it a negative recommendation do not ever buy this death trap it's a piece of garbage and not worth handling and i'm not going to say anything more about it you know what it's like you see a cool new filament and you want to try it out but as you're hovering over that buy button you remember the last three spools of fancy filament that you bought used for that one thing and haven't used since you could join one of those monthly filament subscription boxes and maybe get one or two of the cool ones, but you'll also be buried in more samples than you can use, not to mention the... Seriously, red PLA? It sounds like you need the 3D Printing Professor Filament of the Month Club. Each month you'll receive a generous coil of just the good stuff, enough to work with it, but not so much that you'll feel guilty later. Thanks, 3D Printing Professor. Wait, that's me. Join the Filament of the Month Club today. Ah, the Da Vinci Color. You know, this 3D printer is a very difficult one to score because, one, I was in on the beta, so I got it before everybody else, and they're still working out a lot of the problems with it. And, two... I had some problems with it after I did the video. Let's put it on the score. Price, <laughs> it's super expensive. It's not just expensive to own, it's expensive to operate because you have to buy your filament and your ink from Da Vinci and they charge a lot for it. Its ease of use is actually fairly high because it's got a great slicer, it's got a great touchscreen interface. I like it. It's got a high user, it's got a high ease of use and so I'll give it a good score on that. But in capability, it does what no other 3D printer can do, and it only does it with their PLA. You can't put in high temp carbon fiber. You can't. You, you have to use their PLA if you want to use this machine. And so, while it's more capable than any other 3D printer, or it's capable of what no other 3D printer is. It's not capable of a lot of the things that other 3D printers are. It's got a nice big build volume, so I'll give it that. But its capability score is a weird one, and I'm, I'm going to kind of have to say it depends on your needs. Now, I do really, really like this 3D printer. I don't recommend it in the general case, but that I have one, I'm very happy with. And I'm getting back into using the DaVinci Color, so there will be more about this in the very near future. Okay, let's call that good for this time. When I originally made this video, I had intended it to just be one long super mega re-review, but it really ran a lot longer, even after editing my thoughts down. So I'm going to break this up into multiple parts, and uh, I guess that kind of means it's a return to March Madness! <laughs> Remember last year, I had March where I reviewed a bunch of printers, and here I am again reviewing printers in March. I, I didn't intend for this to be a thing, but I guess it's a thing now. So hardware reviews through the month of March as we talk about coming up next, a 3D printer that I didn't give high enough marks to the first time and ending with a 3D printer that I don't like the way it is, but I hope one day it'll be better. And I hope that you look forward to that. I will see you in the next video.
Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.